Kabul, the ancient capital of the mountain-locked kingdom of the brave Afghans, situated on a flat circular plain and surrounded by rugged brown hills. The city is a mixture of the old and the new. Its modern streets and picturesque roads with long sheltering rows of poplar trees. Its flowing fountains and waterfalls, its lakes and gardens, all have a charm of their own, a charm which is indigenous, exotic and oriental. Every year, the freedom-loving Afghans celebrate the last week of August as their independence week. The martial music of the Afghan bands resounds in the decorated streets of the metropolis and draws hundreds of ruddy-cheeked lads from their homes and thousands of trigger-conscious tribesmen from their fields to pay homage to the memory of the martyrs who laid their lives so that Afghanistan might live. Liberty-loving Afghans cherish their national freedom above everything else. And these monuments remind them of the heroic sacrifices of generations of their countrymen in the cause of national independence. And this is the monument commemorating martyrdom of the great Mujahid, the late King Nadir Shah, the father of modern Afghanistan. of the celebrations witnessed a great military display watched by thousands. Steel helmeted soldiers in their slick uniforms, armored cars and mounted guns. Such is the martial splendor of Afghanistan, poised to honor His Majesty the King, whose arrival everybody is waiting so eagerly. Punctually at 8.20 a.m., his Majesty arrived in the royal car. He was welcomed by His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister, and the Chief of the General Staff, and was offered a salute of 29 guns. Alighting from the car, His Majesty got into a jeep to inspect his faithful warriors. After the inspection, His Majesty got down and with the naked sword paid the homage to the great warrior, late Nadir Shah. His Majesty is under the royal canopy to take salute of the Afghan army. At 8.45 started the passing out parade of the royal troops. The Afghan army is the flower of the nation. The newly commissioned cadets, the young students of the military academy, short-term trainees, Rows of policemen and grenadiers march past His Majesty to the accompaniment of the military tunes of the Afghan bands. And then the heavy anti-aircraft guns. Groups of aeroplanes dived in formation, showering congratulatory leaflets all around. There are also the qualified recruits of the police school and a body of the police force. And these famous batteries, famous on account of the part they played in the struggle for independence. How the admiring crowds cheer them. These are followed by hill batteries, batteries for use in the planes and more anti-aircraft guns. A number of helmeted men brought the rear of the parade which lasted nearly two hours and aroused tremendous enthusiasm among the watching multitudes. <laughs> Afghans adore games of all kinds and are keen sportsmen. The Independence Week is also a week of sports, of matches, of races. Every afternoon during these seven eventful days, thousands of Afghans would gather to witness the hockey and football matches. Here is a hockey match being played between the Afghan Military 11 and the team of the All India Hockey Federation, the heroes of the last World Olympiad. 
what clever stick work and what speed. The first half found both the teams equal. But in the second half, the Indians, by their quick short passes, scored a victory by three goals to nil. In this course of the matches and games, the Afghan youth found an opportunity for display of gymnastics and races. Young Afghans from various schools and institutions marched past with their bands and banners. The gymnastic demonstration gave evidence of suppleness of bodies and hard and arduous training. And now watch a football match between the Aliens Club and the All India Football Federation 11. A great game indeed. Both the sides displayed equal dexterity and speed. The Indians stole a lead in the first half by scoring a goal, which the Afghan side soon after equalized. Perhaps the happiest during the Independence Week were the Afghan people themselves. The democratic nature of the state gives them all facilities for games and recreation. To them, the traditional ram fighting provides as great a pleasure as a duel between two warriors. Finally, the dancing. The Afghan youth have their own way of dancing to the beating of the drum and the sweet melody of the flute. They let themselves go. Gradually, the music becomes faster, and so do the dancers. Parades, games and dances are only a part of the varied program chalked out to celebrate the week. An important event is the exhibition of Afghan arts and crafts. In spite of its insular position, Afghanistan has made lots of progress in the industrial field and well maintained its cultural heritage. Here you find some of the best specimens of Afghan crafts. Beautiful carpets, soft rugs, products of the handloom industry, Afghan jewelry inlaid with precious stones. The merchants and the manufacturers really do some brisk business during these days. Another major attraction during the celebrations is the Indian Arts Exhibition, organized by the Indian Embassy. The Honorable Dr. Keska, Indian Deputy Minister for Foreign Affairs, and His Excellency Sri Rupchan, Indian Ambassador to Afghanistan, took great pains in making this show really representative of their country's art. Afghan hospitality is proverbial. His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister, Sardar Shah Mahmud Khan Ghazi, invited the Indian team to his beautiful residence, complimented them on their skill in the game, and gave each member a memento of their visit to Afghanistan, and said, We Afghans are friends of all and foes of none. With India, our relations are extremely friendly. Your visit to Afghanistan, I'm sure, will further strengthen the social and cultural ties which link the two countries together. The future peace of the world depends to a great extent on the happy understanding between nations. The manager of the Indian team made a suitable reply and the guests enjoyed a sumptuous feast. The Indian ambassador also gave a party to meet the team of his country. Besides the Honorable Dr. Keska, high Afghan dignitaries, the members of the diplomatic corps, other prominent citizens attended the function. Everyone enjoyed a very pleasant party. Finally, the Indian merchants in Afghanistan arranged a feast to meet their country's foreign minister. There is no communal problem in Afghanistan. An equality and liberty enjoyed by the Hindus and Sikhs in the country is remarkable. They love Afghanistan and are treated as Afghans first and Afghans last. Thus ended the eventful week, a week of celebrations.